Very often in mathematics, what we want to be able to do is to relate one item or one object to another. We want to be able to say that there's some comparison between them, there's some relationship between them. And in fact, one that we've seen in the past before is the less than symbol. So for instance, we have a way if we want to relate or to compare two different integers by, we can say, is it true that one integer is less than the other? So this tells us a relationship between these two different integers. Now, some of the pairs of integers that you can imagine have this relationship. Like for instance, it is true that two is less than five. This is a true fact and this particular pairing 2 comma 5, that ordered pair, has this particular relationship. But this is not always the case. Like, some pairs don't have this relationship. For example, if I go the other way around and I say, is 5 less than 2? Well, this is not the case. And maybe I'll put a not symbol through this. It is not the case that 5 is less than 2. So if I think about all of the ordered pairs of integers that I could have, where I've got a first one and a second one, Sometimes those pairs have this relationship, and sometimes those pairs do not. As a second example, let, let me imagine I've got a kind of funny set. I'm going to have a set, and, and by the way, we will often visually depict a set as just a big circle, and then you just write the elements inside of the circle. So what I want to imagine over here is I've got a set of just a bunch of different humans. So I'm going to put a point here, maybe I'll call it, I've got a human 1, I've got a human 2, I've got a human 3, I've got a human 4, something like that. So this is the set that contains a bunch of different humans. And then over here I'm going to draw a different set. This set is going to be a set that contains a bunch of different pets. Maybe I have a dog, I'll call it D1. Maybe I have a cat, I'll call it C1. Maybe I have another dog, I'll call it D2. Maybe I'll have a monkey, I'll call that M1. A bunch of different possibilities like this. Now, what I want you to think about is that these two different sets, the set of humans and the set of pets, there could be some relationship. So maybe what we're going to do is we're going to make our relation be ownership that the human owns the pet, that is a relationship. So one way that I can depict the relationship that a human owns a pet is by drawing an arrow that connects these elements. So perhaps the first human owns, say, the cat, all right? And perhaps the second human owns this dog over here. So I'm, I'm telling you, how is there this relationship? How does this work? And then maybe it's the case that this third human over here, uh, it, it could be that he's connected. Maybe the, the, the third human and the second human live together. And in fact, that the truth is that they both co-own this first dog. And so that, that really both the pairs, H2D1 and H3D1, both of those pairs have a relationship of the human owning the particular pet. And then maybe, this human, age four, doesn't own any pets, and maybe <laughs> the dog and the monkey are just running around wild and don't have any human owners. So this is a possibility. This tells you a visual depiction of my two different sets, and it tells you which of these pairs, which ordered pairs, are going to have relationships. So we can say that a particular ordered pair, like H1, D1, that this means that the human that I have denoted by H1, the human that we've denoted by H1 owns the pet that I have denoted by D1. So now we have these two examples, the less than inequality that, that allowed us to relate to integers, and then sort of this funny picture with humans and pets. So now what I want to have is a formal definition of what a relation is and precisely what that's going to be. And we should be thinking that this has a lot to do with ordered pairs because all of my relations that I have is I have a, a first component that is related to a second component and the order matters so I have an ordered pair. So our formal definition is this. A relation and I'm going to denote my relation by R. That's the, the name of it. It's the relation R. 
And it's a relationship between two different sets, so between A and B. We've been thinking of it as all of these different ordered pairs, but ordered pairs are elements of the Cartesian product, this, this A cross B. So when I say that a relation is a subset of A cross B, what I'm meaning over here is IE ordered pairs. And my ordered pairs are going to be of the form, and I use little a and little b, I use lower cases when I'm denoting the elements, is of ordered pairs, and they are in the Cartesian product a times b, where a and b in capitals are denoting my sets. So in the first example, you had a and b being, say, the real numbers or the integers, and that your relationship was less than, it was just all of the ordered pairs that had that property. So like the pair 2, 5 would be in there, but the pair 5, 2 would not. And in our humans and pets examples, we had some pairings of humans and pets were in there and some were not. So it is, it is not all possible pairings, at least it's usually not all possible pairings, that could be a kind of trivial relationship, I suppose. But it is some subset, some collection of ordered pairs that is within this Cartesian product but it's not necessarily going to be the entirety, and so it is a subset.